Welcome in everybody to Conway, South Carolina, about two hours away from where you were just watching in Charleston as Wake Forest took care of Towson. Here in the second semifinal at the Myrtle Beach Invitational, it's Wichita State and the Liberty Flames. The Liberty Flames have a one-point lead. They are the conference favorites in their new conference, Conference USA, alongside Damian Fishback. I'm Rich Hollander. Kenny Poto with his first two of the game. One of the two returners for Paul Mills and these Wichita State Shockers. Here's the starting five for Liberty, the same starting five that Richie McKay has put out there in their first three games. Jack Cleveland dribbles it off his foot, and that's a Liberty turnover. Yeah, rare turnover by Liberty. Uh, do a nice job of taking care of the basketball, but I think they're having a challenge adjusting to this size. Wichita State has high major size, 6'10", 6'11", of Ballard and Poto. Their front line is something that I think Liberty's going to have to deal with tonight. Beverly, the Miami transfer has an and one opportunity. Harlan Beverly. Number 20 in black, 6'5", 195 pounds out of Detroit, Michigan. We talked about him being a transfer from Miami, so he's obviously got Elite Eight, Final Four experience. I think this Wichita State team is as talented as you will see as any team in America, one through five. They've got size, they've got athleticism, and they've got have, they have guys who can knock down the jump shot as well. Beverly completes the three-point play. Wichita State out fast in the first three minutes with a 9-5 lead. These two teams poured on the points in the quarterfinals. Wichita State scored 86, matched only by... Liberty's 88 in their quarterfinal matchups, and in his first season at Wichita, Paul Mills takes the reins, looking to take the Shockers back to the NCAA tournament after they've missed the dance the last two years. He, of course, has experience taking teams to the NCAA tournament. Did it twice in his six years with Oral Roberts. Beverly, again with a strong take to the dish. This is the matchup that we talked about yesterday. The size and length of Wichita State versus the speed of Liberty. And despite Liberty being just five hours north of here in Lynchburg, Virginia, it is a pro shockers crowd. It's almost like the roundhouse south in here. Picked off by Vincent. Vincent, a phenomenal defender for Liberty. And that foul is going to be called on Wichita State. Richie McKay, a resurgence at Liberty, authored by the 58-year-old head coach in his 11th year with the Flames. Took a brief respite from the head coaching duties to go serve as the associate head coach for Tony Bennett at UVA. But he's returned, and he's brought the pack line defense with him. Yeah, he certainly did. You know, Virginia made the NCAA tournament three out of McKay's last four years when he was with the program. And you think about the style that he brings to this game. It's a reason why, no matter what conference he's in, the Liberty Flames seem to be a, a champion. One of the reasons why they're preseason champions this year as well. Kyle Road off the window, too strong. Benzant grabs the loose ball and a fresh possession for Liberty with time running out on the shot clock. Matheny can't nail the three. Yeah, that's a good look, though. I like the shot fake. Right now, the Flames moving so fast, though, and the game is coming easy to Wichita State. 22 in white, Kyle Road, a young man who Richie McKay calls the best leader he has ever coached, has the ball. He's the Conference USA Player of the Week in Liberty's first week in that league. Right now, Wichita State with a two-possession lead over the Flames, a trip to the Myrtle Beach Invitation Tournament, the success that he had with, with Scott Drew. We know that these are well-coached teams. What this game will boil down to, though, is the efficiency on the offensive end. Liberty cannot turn over the basketball, and they're going to have to knock shots down from the perimeter. And I think the Shockers have to pound the basketball inside, use their size, and play the game inside out. Liberty just two for six in the early going. Conversely, the Shockers shooting 56% from the field. Three to shoot. 
Throw does. Short on the three. And a beat day. Number five in block grabs the rebound for Wichita State. Shockers, one of just 10 4 0 teams in the early part of this season. Liberty comes in at 3 0, and we're going the other way. Yeah, I think Todd Austin was right there on that particular call. Reginald continuing to move, and I like the fact that he's explaining to him what he's doing right or what he's doing wrong. I love officials that actually communicate back to those players and help teach them where they make their mistakes so that they can improve upon them. Colin Porter brings it up for the Flames. Seven points, eight assists for Colin Porter in their quarterfinal win over Furman. But he turns it over there. Yeah, Rich, oftentimes we talk about how length impacts people making shots. We talk about shot blockers and we say, well, how many shots do they alter? But keep your eyes on the length and how it disrupts the offensive liberty just by the Shockers using their wingspan to disrupt passes as well. Kenny Poto off the mark. Big man can shoot the, the three. He's got range. Speaking of range, Caden Matheny's got that as well. Number three in white. You see how difficult that pass is? It's disrupted by the offense, but look at that patience. Around and out for Matheny from the corner. Good look. Richard McKay was clapping his hands on the sideline. That's the type of offensive sets they need to have. Beverly, he's been aggressive oh. in the early going, and his second and one opportunity of the night. Well, Harlan Beverly, 6'5", 195 pounds, knows how to use his size, and he plays with a nice pace to his game. You see the hesitation right there? Just giving time for the defense to get a little discombobulated, not sure who was going to guard him. Young man that scored all 13 of his points after halftime in their win over Western Kentucky, where he had five rebounds, three assists, and four steals as well. Shockers in the midst of a 9-0 run to take this 13-5 lead. Six minutes gone by in this semifinal. Furman's offense, or rather, Liberty's offense, known for their tempo or lack thereof. They're 345th in the nation in tempo. But Richie McKay told us that word does not come up when we coach offense. Yeah, he told us with his points, close to 90 points in the first round of the tournament yesterday, and he's telling us now with his offense. Well, Sunday afternoon, we have women's basketball on ABC. It's Duke taking on number six Stanford inside Naples Pavilion at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. You don't want to miss that talked about how in the men's game there's only 10 teams across division one who are 4-0 or better houston's the only 5-0 team right now well the women's game has a lot of parity in it as well yeah they certainly do big time playmakers andrew reese Caitlin clark cameron great there goes that size again though Woo! crafty from Brody Peebles, who had 16 points last night as his first two tonight crafty and persistent I don't see any intimidation right now from Liberty. Not backing down whatsoever. Rodgers tried to take advantage of the size mismatch against Matheny, but the fadeaway wouldn't go. Liberty can tie it with a three. Matheny tries it and got it. Pretty basketball. We often talk about speed north and south, but I want you to continue to focus on Liberty speed east and west on the offensive end. And there's Xavier Bell doing it more the old-fashioned way. He's bulling his, bulling his way to the basket. Well, he's going to have that opportunity all night. We mentioned it before. Colin Porter, 5'9". Uh, Kate Matheny, 5'10". He's going to have a size advantage that he needs to continue to attack on the offensive end. Ten on the shot clock. Rode takes it himself. That's Kyle Rode. That's 6'7", 220 pounds out of Lexington, Kentucky. He's solid, too, now. He's strong, high motor. Look at him defensively here. Two on one. Rode with the step through, and he missed it. And Bell comes away with it for Wichita State. Offensive foul. We're going the other way. 
When we come back, the Liberty Flames will have a chance to grab the lead. Liberty Flames. That same intensity, that same aggressiveness tonight. However, he has to be diligent and intelligent because you saw Brody Peoples on that last play take a charge. That's what Liberty's going to try to do to him defensively. He touched on it earlier, former Mr. Basketball in the state of Kansas. That's saying something for Xavier Bell. Yeah, only three, right? Galen Nicholson in 90, 1988 and Ryan Ayers in 1992. So I'm sure the Shockers are glad to have him. Bell with the ball now, number one in black, left hand, no good. Yeah, I felt like that time it was a little bit of a force. He's got to allow it to come to him organically, read the defense. You mentioned it when we were off air, the amount of turnovers by the Shockers, five and zero assists. Yeah, and that goes against everything that Paul Mills builds his programs on. Look at that size advantage, though. Almost every position, the Shockers are bigger. Seven to shoot for the Flames. Ben Sutherland. And he draws the foul on Quincy Ballard. Sutherland seeing his first action of the season. Well, the red shirt freshman, 6'7", 210 pounds. He caught him a break that time. <laughs> Paul Mills extremely upset with that particular play. But give him credit because a lot of times when you're undersized, Players shy away or they're a little apprehensive about attacking the rim. Liberty, even though they take a lot of outside shots, you watch. They continue to keep pressure on the rim via the bounce or the pass. They certainly kept the pressure on the Furman Paladins last night in what was a titanic mid-major matchup. They dominated in the second half. From the end of the first to the start of the second half, they went on a 20-2 to two run against Furman. Yeah, I was shocked, but Furman definitely showed up tonight to respond, even with a depleted team. And there goes Xavier Bell again. He just feels like he can score whenever he wants to. I'm anxious to see how Richie McKay responds defensively to try to attack him. Just living in the painted area, muscling his way to the hoop. Eight points for Bell. 17-16, Wichita State lead. Here's Peebles. And it blocked by Bell. And saved by Cleveland. With five on the shot clock. Porter off the mark. Excellent defensive trip that time by the Shockers. Not only do they have the link, but they were active, moving their feet. They were early helpers. Here's Isaac Abide. Shot fake, puts it up. And what a rebound and put back by Quincy Ballard. The Florida State transfer in the scoring column. Yeah, big boy basketball. I think he's a difference maker. A big that continues to improve every single time he steps in between the lines. Number 15, 6'11", 251 pounds. Only had two points last night in their win against Coastal Carolina. But Wichita State was plus 11 when he was on the floor. There's Gabriel McKay. The coach's son had a shot blocked. He saves it. Five on the shot clock. McKay from the other corner. No good. What would you like to see Wichita State do offensively? I love him to continue to pound the basketball on the interior. Sunday afternoon, a men's college basketball doubleheader from the Mecca. MSG on ESPN, the number five UConn Huskies, and their national championship. Go to Madison Square Garden to take on the Indiana Hoosiers at 1 Eastern. Then it's number 19, Texas, taking on Louisville. An exciting day of basketball in New York City. Yeah, you look at those conferences, Big East, Big Ten. Uh, Big 12, of course, again, going against the ACC. Those are going to be incredible matchups that we will remember come March. Bell, again, that floater doesn't go that time. I like Xavier Bell. He's not pressing too hard, but if he could try to get a little bit closer to where he's even shooting layup, layups versus trying to float every single time. Had five assists last night. And that's one thing that Paul Mills likes even more than the points that he scored. Beautiful defense that time, though, by Xavier Bell. Oftentimes, when you have more size, you're a little lackadaisical on the defensive end. Xavier Bell's not displaying that whatsoever. He's active. He's using that length. 
You can tell he's a little winded as well. You know, most coaches don't buy into preseason prognostications. But you're telling me that this Wichita State team is only the eighth best team in the American? There's a big three from Liberty. Kyle Rhodes got a pair of them, and we're knotted up again at 19. And now Liberty with a chance to wrestle away the lead once again. Road couldn't go back to back. If, you know, Liberty is a prime example of penetrating to pass versus penetrating to score. They do a sensational job of that. Blocked from behind. That's Xander Yates who's going to be called for the foul. And we'll take our first time out here with Liberty. Part of Feast Week, which really isn't a week. It's more like 10 days. And here are some headlines in case you need to catch up on things. Number six, Houston just advanced to the Charleston Classic Final about two hours north of here. Houston, the only 5-0 team in the country right now. The Maui Invitational, a stacked field, starts on Monday from Honolulu. And Auburn won the Legends Classic at the Barclays Center in yeah. Brooklyn earlier today. Rich, I think Auburn could be the most underrated team in the SEC. They have length. Uh, they have an incredible part, point guard in uh, Aiden Holloway. And, and I think he plays with such good poise. They have a veteran front line. Janai Green, Jalen Williams, Dylan Caldwell. Uh, they're going to be a tough team to deal with all season long. And uh, They lost versus Baylor, but I think that only motivated them to continue to improve. Spoken like someone who knows a thing or two about Auburn basketball. No doubt about it. <laughs> Wichita looking to join the Houston Cougars as the only 5-0 teams in the nation. And they look good so far in this first half. Quincy Ballard with a chance at a three-point play. Well, this is what we call slipping the screen. Boom, right there is the slip. And then he just uses his size, length, and athleticism and glides to the rim. He's one of the reasons why I think Wichita State is a team uh, that can compete with the Florida Atlantics, with the Memphises. Uh, I think this is a team that's going to be a challenge each and every single night out. Florida Atlantic, a Final Four team a year ago, returned just about everybody. Their preseason top 15 team. And like we said earlier, not a lot expected from this Wichita State club, but I think that's more because no one knows what to expect sure. from Wichita State. Woo! Rhodes got another three. You know you could expect that from him. You know, Rhodes was in the warm-up line, and he said, it's all about us, guys. It's all about us, and that's the mindset they're playing with. They don't care about the size. They don't care about the athleticism. They want to play Liberty basketball. High off the three off the mark from Bell from the top of the key. Good box out and game rebounding. Every single white jersey attacking the rim. For the lead, Matheny off the mark. Ben Zant shovels it back to Shiloh Robinson. Now Porter left alone, and Liberty is out top by one. And with that three ball, we'll take a 30-second timeout. Oh. Check yeah, that. We will stay right where we are with 6.29 to go. Yeah, they were just giving Ridgenall a chance to put his shoe on that time. It's, it's actually one of the reasons why uh, you actually saw Colin Porter wide open. Dalen Ridgenall was trying to put his shoe back on, and you had an offensive rebound, and he was really just stuck underneath the basket. Huge shot, though, by the Flames. Almost stolen away. Van Zandt wanted the over and back call. Didn't get it. Dalen Ridgenall, number 10 in black, is a name that we haven't called yet tonight. Here he is in the corner. He was electric in the quarterfinals. This is his first shot here. Shallow Robinson wanted it on the block. They haven't been able to see him yet. There it is. That's a prime example of maintaining your patience. A lot of times when you see a mismatch, 
there's a sense of wanting to hurry and get the basketball inside. Listen, you've got a 30-second shot clock. The last thing you want is a turnover. Liberty is a prime example. That man right there, Coach Richard McKay, is responsible for this, of making sure they maintain their poise and getting the basketball inside when the time is right. Well, you can tell from the numbers already in the first half, still with 5.50 to go, that Richie McKay knows that Wichita State has the interior advantage. They've already attempted 17 three-point shots. Yeah, well, but they're, they're good shots, right? On the other side, you see where Wichita State's trying to pound the basketball inside. You know, uh, they're actually dominating the points in the paint 18 to 6. And Shallow Robinson, another one of those guys on the front line for Liberty, who's 6'7", good size, good motor, and versatility. Obi Rogers looking to create for himself. Comes up empty. Rogers scoreless so far after 15 last night in the quarterfinal. Rich Paul Mills has been a little bit smaller instead of with the two bigs. He went to four out, one in. Rode takes it strong and draws the foul. Kyle Rode will go to the line already with 11 points. Tomorrow night it's a Pac-12 primetime college football showdown featuring Michael Penix Jr. at number 5 Washington squaring off against number 11 Oregon State. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app. And it's one of the Heisman hopefuls yep. for a Washington team that don't know if they're going to be left out of the national championship picture or not, but certainly a win against the top 11 team like Oregon State will help their case. And for people who are wondering if the Georgia Bulldogs are going to be left out, just the word of advice. Look at the last two years and the success of Coach Kirby Smart. That's not a team that I would count out as far as being out of the playoff. 13 for Road. It's a three-point Liberty lead. And it's going to stay Wichita State Paul. Rich, this is what is done at the NBA level so much better than at the collegiate level. When there's a mismatch, a mismatch, excuse me, at the NBA level, they do a great job of organically finding a way to set up guys to have that isolation. In college, it's a little bit more challenging at times. And so right now, Coach Paul Mills is trying to continue to run his offense while at the same time take advantage of the height advantage that he has on the interior with Xavier Bell. Shockers and an 0 for 5 drought. Rogers ends that drought. There you go. Right? Kobe Rogers, a guy who can hit mid range jump shots all day long, so you don't want to force it. Let it come to you if you're Xavier Bell, who's been successful in this first half. Coaching staff at Wichita State have been so impressed with Kobe Rogers and his work ethic. 7 a.m. workouts nearly every day in Wichita. They're going to count that basket, and it's going to be a four-point play opportunity for Kyle Rhodes. He is firing away from beyond the arc. And the officials, and Rich, that was actually my mistake. So he said because it was after him being in the act of shooting, that's the reason why he's actually shooting the free throws. Even though we thought that he potentially was, and you see the look on Coach Paul Mills' face right. because this is a five-point swing. Yeah, instead of it right being a four-point play. Well, and that's why they were taking the time to see if he was in the act of shooting or not. From our view, I thought he was in the act of shooting, but obviously they felt differently. And guess what? These officials are right about 99.9% .9 of the time, and I think they were right on this particular play. So that gives Liberty their largest lead of the night. 32-26, four and a half to go. Trip to the title game on the line. Seven to shoot for the Shockers. Now four on the clock. And we might have an offensive foul, and that's exactly what we do. Kelly Self calling it on Xavier Bell. <laughs> Bell going to the well just one time too many. Well, listen, I know Coach Paul Mills is upset, but we saw this in the Furman game yesterday. I compare this Lib Liberty team, and it's because of the extension on the arm of Xavier Bell that time. That's why I said he's got to be cautious on how he attacks. 
So many people discuss the fact that Liberty slows down the basketball or that they have a slower tempo. And because of that, I think they rush their offense. They try to get it too quickly. And if you're the Wichita State Shockers right now, just slow down, take a breath, and continue to attack your advantage. So now we're counting down to four minutes to go in the first half. Liberty in the midst of a 13-2 run. Good nice pass. feed. Road to Robinson. And a late foul called on Dalen Ridgenal. You know, you often have coaches that when they're facing uh, a team that likes to press you or a team that likes to slow you down, they say, we're going to play our style of basketball. Coach Richie McKay and Liberty, they're a program and a coaching staff that does that every single time they step in between the lines, and they're forcing Wichita State into their type of game tonight. Not a surprise that it's a low-scoring contest so far. Both of these defenses are fierce. And at least at this point, that plays more into the hands of the Liberty Flames because of the style of play. Sure. Again, 345 in the nation in adjusted tempo, courtesy of Ken Pop. Shiloh Robinson misses the free throw attempt. Shiloh Robinson, we talked about his size, actually had close to a double-double in the season in opener. Ten points, nine rebounds. I think those three front-line players, we mentioned the front line of the Shockers, the front line of Liberty right now is winning that battle on the interior. Taken away. It's Matheny with the blow by. Quick. We always wondered, would it be the side between myself and KB Burdett? But we were correct. They were correct. And that's why the call was made. Just like marriage, communication. Oh, don't, don't even key. start that conversation. <laughs> don't start that conversation. Liberty on a 16-2 run. They have their largest lead of the night. It's nine with three and a half to go. You see how stagnant the offense is, though? With Liberty's offense, the ball's going left to right. It's going side to side. They're working as a collective unit. It seems like everything Wichita State is doing, it's almost individually trying to go one-on-one, -on -one, and that's why they are currently in a nine-point nine deficit. Here's Matheny. Thought about the three. Instead, in amongst the trees. Skilled. That's why college basketball is the best sport. Because you don't, you look out in warm-ups and you see the size of the Shockers. Never would you think they would be down 11 points, but because of the speed and skill of the Flames, they're doing a great job of winning this game thus far. A dozen for Xavier Bell, but not getting much help otherwise offensively. We have Robinson, and Robinson cashes it in. Older teams with chemistry, with cohesion, those are the teams that win basketball in the early part of the season and in March as well. Let's take another look at Caden Matheny finding that second gear. Yeah, 2021 Mac all freshman team. He's just showing you how they work collectively. How about the shot fake, right? If you look at Liberty, they will have pass fakes, shot fakes to keep the defense off balance. And you see Kenny Poto, he has the size. He's even extremely agile, but he just can't get there in time. He kind of reminds me of a little bit. Remember Mac McClung? Yeah, I'll take also that. Also a Virginia player from Gate City. There's a three, and that was sorely needed by Wichita State. Kobe Rogers. Under two to go in the first half. Liberty an eight-point lead with the basketball. Cleveland. Comes up empty, and it's Wichita State basketball. Coach Richard McKay doesn't like that, but I give credit to the Shockers. I think they've settled down now, right? The emotions were high for that time. Great fans 
uh, on hand here tonight. I think the Shockers have showed up as well as any of the teams here. If the Shockers win, they join the Houston Cougars as the only 5-0 teams in the country. And that's two for two from three for number four. <laughs> I heard someone holler pass the ball, but Rogers had something else in mind. Kobe Rogers out of Covington, Georgia, now trying to put the Shockers on his back. The lead has been cut to five. Liberty goes inside out. Road short on that three. Chance to make it a one possession ball game. Rodgers again. Timeout Liberty. Richie McKay wants to talk it over. We call a rhythm shooter, right? He wasn't really dribbling that basketball to get anywhere at home. But that play, he was particularly going to the basket. The previous play, he was just gathering himself to get the shot that he wanted. Now you can see the Wichita State defense ratcheted up a notch. Matheny, sloppy, turned it over. Now Bell goes to work. And Xavier Bell will go to the line. That foul on Matheny, his first. How about that? All the times that Xavier Bell's been trying to post up Caden Matheny, that's the first foul on him tonight. Give credit to Caden Matheny for defending without fouling, being aggressive, being physical, but keeping his hands out. He has started all but one game of his collegiate career. And he's a redshirt junior. He's played a few seasons at Bowling Green before transferring to Lynchburg. We've been talking about the offense of the Shockers, but the defense is what's allowed them to get back in this game. New ball, they come away with it. How about this? Coach Paul Mills went all small lineup. We talked about the bigs in Poto and Ballard. They're not in the game currently. Seven second difference between shot clock and game clock. Beverly way short on that three, but a good save by Dylan Ridgenall. And only two on the shot clock because Beverly's three did not touch the rim. So the shot clock doesn't reset. Nine seconds to go in the half, but only two on the shot clock. Well, keep your eye out for Ballard now. Paul Mills snuck him in the game. Watch for a potential back screen and then a lob over the top. I don't know if anybody up there can get where Ballard is going to try to go. They looked for it, didn't find it. Rogers squeezes it off. And it's a shot clock violation. Good stand on the defensive end by the Flames. Yeah, well, the, the Flames did a nice job of defending that. They do such a good job of working collectively, man. You give me five guys that work as a cohesive unit versus five individual guys, I'll take that unit every time. And that's the difference. Wichita State's actually been doing a much better job at working together. All five guys sitting down, communicating on the defensive end. Plenty of time for the Flames to get off a good shot. Six seconds to go. Now two seconds. Matheny, all by himself, but he came up empty. What a half. Missed their last shot, but they take a three-point lead into the locker room. In the Versus trying to get things too quick. Here's a look at our game track brought to you by Visit Myrtle Beach. Wichita State with those 22 paint points, but... Much to the consternation of head coach Paul Mills, only two assists and eight turnovers. For Liberty, they shot more threes than they did twos. Here's another three by Rowe, and that's why they're shooting threes. Man, they come out of the, they come into the half ready. I mean, it, what was that, one pass? They know where each other's going to be. They, you can see they throw behind the back passes out of necessity, not to showboat. Road had 19 in the quarterfinal win. He's got 19 already. Nice look inside. Big to big passing. Well, as we continue to watch this game, Wichita State can potentially have the advantage because most of what they're getting is at point blank range at the rim. 
as the game pressure continues to get on Liberty, these jump shots that they've been making can become much more challenging. Long rebound, Matheny. 0 for 2 with a couple of quick triggers. And that's why if you're the Flames, you want to keep this lead, try to keep a cushion, try to keep the pressure off of it. Stop and go from Beverly, and he turns it over. And this is what you can't do as the Shockers because the Flames are lethal in transition. They have tremendous secondary breaks. They use screens. They move the basketball so well from side to side. Look at this passing. Oh, and that was blocked by Ballard, one of the best in the country in that department. Up ahead of Cleveland. Deep three. And Rhodes off the mark there. Yeah, it looked to be a little bit out of his range. Nice job defensively by the Shockers. Rodgers forces the issue, draws the foul on Benzan. So Kobe Rogers will go to the line for the first time tonight. The winner of this semifinal faces the Vermont Catamounts. The back-to-back -back champs and the American East Conference have started off this season strong, undefeated at 4-0. They took care of St. Louis in the first semifinal. That will be played, that championship will be played at 5.30 Sunday on ESPN2. Yeah, they had a nice balance attack today. Four guys in double figures. The success that they have year in and year out is unmatched all across college basketball. Right now, Kobe Rogers trying to pick up where he left off. Sienna transfer, a dangerous long distance threat, but showing his ability to go to the basket here tonight. Got ourselves a two point game, two minutes into the second half. Here's Matheny surveying. Ten on the shot clock. Now five to shoot. Cleveland does. And it's an air ball. Johnny on the spot is Kyle Rowe. Oftentimes when teams reverse sides of the floor, it often opens up offensive rebounding lanes as well. That's what happened with the Flames on that trip. Good double team by Cleveland. And it's going to stay Wichita State basketball. See, Rich, this is what I'm talking about. You see, look at the defense of the Shockers. They don't even know where they're supposed to be boxing out. They're mismatched. They're spreaded. They're separated. That's the job that Liberty has done offensively by being patient and moving the basketball left to right, east to west. Good hands by Rode. Two on Taking one. Taking down. And Rode on the other end. Left hand got fouled. We'll go to the line. Harlan Beverly with Cal Road two for two from the charity stripe so far tonight. And he misses the first one here. Great explanation by KB Burdett. He he said the ball did not have a chance to go in, and so that's the reason why uh, they called no basket. But good for you to know at home, and obviously whether he was trying to protect himself or not, it was certainly still basket interference. Sure. But the fact that the ball did not have a chance to go in is the reason why they called no basket, and a huge opportunity now for the Shockers. Look at Xavier Bell just imposing his will around the basket. Well, you look at the difference in the size. You know, Xavier Bell is 6'2", 185 pounds. On the other hand. You look at Colin Porter, he's 5'9", 170 pounds. Good battle by both of the smaller guards, and they're doing a nice job of using their speed and their heads. Big shot. And the three-pointers continue to fall for the Liberty Flames, plus the foul. You see the penetra penetration? When Matheny drove, he actually was able to draw three black jerseys. And as a result, it left Xavier Bell trying to guard two white jerseys. <laughs> and you just can't simply have the speed or the fortitude to cover all of that space unless you're communicating and you cannot afford to relax on the defensive end. So Bell and Bauer to the bench.
for Wichita State. As Colin Porter completes a four-point play. Three fouls for Xavier Bell. And it's a seven-point Liberty lead. The winner faces Vermont in the title game on Sunday night. Too much dribbling. Well, trying to get it too quick. Matheny, you're not going to catch up to him. He's shot out of the <laughs> A nine-point Liberty lead. With ten on the shot clock. Liberty takes it away again. Like a pack of lions. You think Turnovers. you're going against just one of them, but you're going against all five at all times. Let's see if the Shockers can just take a breath here, run their offense, see if they can get the basketball to the interior, which is where they've had some success versus going one-on-one. -on -one. If you remember in the quarterfinal game, Kenny Porto was scoreless in the first half. Ended up with 16. He only had two in the first half in this one. This is too much pounding of the basketball. He's been in his hands for about 10 seconds. That is a tough three taken by Kobe Rogers. Wichita State completely taken out of their offensive flow. And Matheny's feeling it. Here he is for three. In and out. And Cleveland gets them a fresh possession. And Porter converts. Biggest lead of the game for the Flames. The difference in two offenses. One, you had Rodgers pounding the basketball. They had two opportunities, and the basketball ripped from teammate to teammate. And the Liberty Flames are here making a statement. 14-48 left to go in the second half. And you could tell, as a game plan, Richie McKay told his club coming into this game, we're going to live and die by the three, and they are living large right now. <laughs> no More threes than twos from the Liberty Flames, and they are cashing in. And with that, we take a media timeout, a 12-point lead for Richie McKay's Liberty Flames looking to improve. You look at this field, Damian Fishback, and this looks like an Elite Eight field. You've got no fewer than five teams in the top 11. Number seven, Tennessee, taking on, as our friend Sean McDonough likes to say, the Harvard of Central New York, Syracuse. But Kansas is in that field, Marquette's in that field, Gonzaga and Purdue. A loaded field for this year's Maui Invitational, and it starts on Monday. A yeah, huge battle of coaches, Blue Blood programs, Mick Cronin, Bill Self, Big, Zach Eady, Hunter Dickinson. It's going to be a phenomenal tournament, which uh, our hearts, thoughts, prayers continue to go out for Maui for them to continue to come back. Here's the Myrtle Beach Invitational. Wichita State and Liberty battling for a spot in the title game. Vermont awaits in that championship clash. Here's Isaac Abide pounding the ball into the block. And now 15 on the shot clock. Nice touch by Rogers. Yeah, Kobe Rogers outside of Xavier Bell has been the one guy that has pretty consistently been able to get whatever shot he wants uh, and continue to uh, be dominant on the interior or exterior for the Shockers. A couple of stars set to check back in. Xavier Bell, number one in black for Wichita State, and Kyle Rode, number 22 in white for the Liberty Flames. Cleveland called for the traveling violation. Rare turnover. For the Flames. Yeah, only their sixth or seventh turnover. I think it's their sixth of the basketball game. You see, on the other hand, 13 for the Shockers. And what that means is obviously an additional seven possessions for Liberty Flames. And if that's three point shots, that's 21 points. Even with two, that's 14 points. That's how they win the basketball game. Good hands by the Liberty defense, but a foul is called. 
Sunday afternoon, it's a men's college basketball doubleheader at Madison Square Garden on ESPN. Number five, UConn taking on Indiana at one Eastern. Then number 19, Texas taking on the Cardinals of Louisville. It's an exciting day of basketball in New York City. Yeah, those are huge games. Opportunities. You think about Hurley, Coach Brooks in Indiana versus UConn. And Coach Kenny Bain still trying to build his program at Global. Started out 2-1, and one, a 20-point victory over Coppin State. And Coach Rodney Terry, the torch has truly been passed from Chris Beard to him now. It is his program. Can't wait to see how the Longhorns continue to progress. Here's out of UConn, that five-star freshman they have, Stephon Castle, went out with a knee injury. Not going to be season-ending, sure. but still a big blow for the defending national champs. Yeah, absolutely, but if, if there's any program, any coach in America that's going to tell his guys that no one's going to feel pity for them as the defending national champions, uh, that's Coach Hurley more physical, passionate coaches that you'll see across all all across college basketball. I mean, prognosticators think the Big East might be the best overall conference in basketball. This is Peebles surrounded by black jerseys. Ten on the shot clock. And a three-second violation. Now Wichita's defense starting to bare its teeth a little bit. Not only their defense, Rich, but their fan base. These tournaments really expose or promote the fan bases at your particular school. Wichita State has made their presence felt. We talked about Feast Week and all these other tournaments. Let me tell you as a former player, fans impact the game more than you think. Hope Arena historically has been one of the best home court advantages in college basketball for the Wichita State Shockers. And they brought a bevy of Shocker faithful down to Myrtle Beach for this one. <laughs> Liberty's tricky. <laughs> and that fan's giving the flop signal. <laughs> but Liberty is, is so good at knowing when to fall and when to stand tall and be physical. A cerebral team, a very heady and savvy team. When you play against Liberty, you have to play against them both physically and intellectually because they will test you on both ends of the floor. And now some backcourt foul trouble for Paul Mills. Xavier Bell has three. Kobe Rogers just got whistled for his second. And Harlan Beverly already has three for the shots. I mean, take a look at the, the size difference of Quincy Ballard and Joseph Vincent. 23 in white versus 15 in black. That backdoor pass picked off. And now a Liberty foul as Harlan Beverly pushed the pace. And Zant whistled for his second foul. Well, you mentioned this earlier, partner. Continuity in college basketball is becoming... A rare commodity. Sure. And Richie McKay has the luxury of having guys who have been with the program a long time. Benzant is exhibit A, his 71st consecutive start wow. with Liberty. How about that job by Xavier Bell? Double team, Colin Porter came over, disrupted him a little bit, almost stole the basketball, but Xavier Bell, the presence of mind, he didn't panic and was able to finish. Porter. Off to the left on the three. It's a two possession ball game. And oh. Rogers, soft touch off the window. He has 16, Bell has 16, and the Shockers are back in it. An 8 0 run from Wichita State. Here's Rowe. Can't silence the crowd. Chance to make it a one possession ball game. Wichita fans in full throat here inside the HT's 530 Eastern. Right now, Wichita State has willed their way back into this contest. They trailed for most of this game, but now that deficit is just four. No matter who wins this basketball game, John Becker and Vermont, who's won 78% of their games the last seven years, will be ready. 
Ten to shoot for the shots. Beverly working off Porter. Step through. Got it to go off the window. Two-point game. There's a reason why this game was played for 40 minutes. Let's see the response now of the Flames. Oh, McKinney had it rejected. A three gives Wichita State back the lead. Rogers feeling it. Oh, and it just rolls off. Don't mind that look, though. Let's see if the Flames get back to running their offense. Moving it, reversing sides of the floors, cutting. That's it, left all alone. Weak side rebound, Richnoff. Wichita State in the midst of a 10-0 run. They're looking for the mismatch, and they found it. Here's Ballard, working on Robinson. Rodgers. And a foul on the floor. That's going to go on Caden Matheny. Well, they are battlers of the Liberty Flames. Caden Matheny, we mentioned it before. Morgantown, West Virginia, 5'10", 170 pounds. And boy, he is feisty. We talked about him at, playing three seasons at Bowling Green. He actually started uh, all but one game. You can tell he's a winner. As are the Sharkers, though. They could have laid their heads down and quit a long time ago, and they're right where they want to be. Knocked out of bounds by Cleveland. No time off the clock. Bell triggers the inbounds for Wichita State. And a five-second call. Yeah, that's on Xavier Bell that time. All he had to do was throw the basketball up to Quincy Ballard. He had a size advantage. He had his arms up. And Coach Paul Mills understands that. But the good news for the Shockers is it was a dead ball foul. Oh, I'm sorry, a dead ball turnover. So they have a chance to set their defense here. It's been a five-plus minute Liberty Flames drought on offense. Matheny ends the drought. Shooter's touch for Caden Matheny, his second three of the night. Yeah, they tightened up those rims a little bit before our first game tonight. It seems like they're still loose enough for Caden Matheny. Nine minutes left. The lead is five. Here's Ridgenau. Off the mark. Weak side rebound, Cleveland. It's almost like... The Shockers are putting even more pressure on their on their cell. Those are the shots that uh, Reginald was making yesterday. Matheny left alone. Off to the left. Offensive rebound, Shiloh Robinson. And a fresh 20 for the Flames. Love the patience here. They're going to make the Shockers sit down and guard for another 20 seconds. The pass. Oh, what a look. Oh, and another rejection by Ballard. Boy, this is elite recovery and reaction by Quincy Ballard. Man, he goes up and gets it. Meet me at the rim. This young man, one of the best shot blockers in the country when he's healthy, and that's a big when. He has had a hard time staying healthy in his career. Just 10 games played last year, but his 16% block percentage would have been tops in the nation if he qualified. Yeah. on the shot clock for the Flames. They'll inbounds right in front of their bench. Robinson. Got it in <laughs> Shiloh Robinson was plus 19 in the first half for the Flames. And he gets a big one there in the second half. He dipsy dude him. You see how quickly he went. Kenny Poto was there. And Quincy Ballard thought that he had him under control, but he spun so quickly, and he was trying to use the rim, but he hung in the air and used the window just long enough to complete, to, to complete the three-point play the old-fashioned way. And then he used the window on the free throw as well. 
just like that. The lead was just two, and now it's back to eight with eight minutes left. Deep three, Peebles off the mark. Rodgers, short. Robinson grabs it. You see on that rebound, though, it was four white jerseys against one Quincy Ballard in the black jersey. Liberty does a great job of gang rebounding. You can't start your offensive transition until you complete the defensive possession with the rebound. Eagles been quiet tonight. Not there. I like it. Just the second bucket of the night. Four for Peebles, the lead is 10. What an answer from Liberty. Rodgers. Can't get the mid-range to go. Cleveland with the no look out of bounds. And we have a timeout on the floor. It's getting tense in this second semifinal. Liberty. A 10-point lead over to Liberty. All you're going to have to do is look at the assist-to-turnover ratio. Three assists and 14 turnovers for the Shockers tonight. Yeah, that's what happens when you, you face a, a tough team. How about that set out of the timeout though by Coach Richard McKay? A staggered down screen for one of his better shooters in Cal Road to keep the pressure on. Now with a 13-point lead with less than six minutes to go in this basketball game. 25 for Kyle Road, a new career high for the reigning Conference USA Player of the Week. And now is when you're in a bad situation when you're facing a Richie McKay team, a Coach Tony Bennett team. You don't want to be down 13 against these guys. This is Liberty's largest lead of the game. Up and under, Brody Peebles. Oh. They just feed off each other. Well, okay. unfortunately for, for the Shockers, though, I think something happened. Short-handed, in addition to be down 15. See if they have an answer in the final six minutes. Kenny Poto. Good follow by Ridgenal. With Dalen Ridgenal is the guy who gets those minutes, right? He's usually one of the first guys off of the bench. A rebounder, a shooter. He was terrific in his first game yesterday. He gives them even more size. Road again. Yeah, just got caught sleeping the wheel. That was Nathan Richnall right there. You just can't relax at all defensively when you're facing the flames. That's seven three-pointers for Kyle Road. TV, I want you to realize watching these guys, the Flames, they're solid, right? They, they've got some girth to them. They're strong. They are hard to back down, and they mix that with incredible speed, uh, and they use their basketball IQ as well. Yes. The threes keep falling for the Liberty Flames. Here they come again, two on one. Peebles up and under, no. Gets it back in the corner for three. Off the side of the backboard. And Ridgenal, a little out of control, but draws the foul. What a sequence, right? And that's what the Flames have done to the Shockers today. They've really thrown them off of their game. I thought the Shockers have been going kind of one-on-one -on -one individually and they've had some success with that but you look at the scoreboard and once again so many people discuss the tempo of coach Richie McKay and the Flames and talk about how slow they play close to 90 points yesterday they've got 73 points today with four minutes and 40 seconds left to go in the basketball game there is nothing wrong with the tempo of this basketball team and, and it seemingly happened in a blur D I mean I was looking at the last timeout and they were around 50 points, and I said, well, there's no way they're getting to 80 tonight. Sure. And now they're at 73 with 440 left. That's what a 19-3 run will do for you.
Wichita State had cut it to two. They had gained back almost all of the momentum, but a veteran Liberty squad has rested back that momentum and taken a commanding 73-56 lead. Rare turnover that time by road. And one of the reasons why they don't turn over the basketball much is we talked about the bigs for Wichita State. When you think about Ballard and, and Poto, those are big guys. They have good size, but they haven't been able to take advantage with scoring at point-blank range at the rim. It's actually the guards that have been trying to take advantage of Wichita State. And so if you don't use the size, then they're actually at a disadvantage on the other end with the foot speed of both Cleveland and Rowe. Bell, and he's fouled by Cleveland. That's three fouls on Cleveland. Now Xavier Bell with Wichita State in the bonus will go to the line for a one and one. Xavier Bell, 16 points, eight rebounds, and a couple of assists. He's certainly done his part tonight. But we talked about that we felt the advantage that Wichita State had to try to expose was the inside or the interior of the flames. And give credit, Shiloh Robinson, Zach Cleveland, and Kyle Rowe have certainly stepped up to the plate and match the size and strength of the Shockers tonight. Two, for two from the line from Xavier Bell giving him 18. Good hand playing up the line. Xavier Bell knocks it out of bounds. 16 on shot clock. Rich, there's a lot of people that probably counted the Flames out because you lose a guy like Darius McKee, an all-time great. Uh, but you have to give a lot of credit to Coach Richie McKay. Darius McGree McGee responsible for 31% of the points, 28% of field goals made, and 43% of the three-point three field goals. But they have not missed a beat in this tournament. Robinson. The follow and the foul. Outstanding. Liberty. Trying to Martin, what a great guy and a terrific coach. You, you know, you look at the upcoming game, if Liberty is able to pull this out, and, you know, you think about two schools that are accustomed to winning basketball, and, and of course, Wichita State and Shockers have as well. Uh, but, man, Vermont, so good. We talked about them winning 78% of their games. Only Gonzaga, Houston, and Kansas have been better. Oh. Xavier Bell with the blow by, and he's got 20 to match his total from last night. This is what I was anxious to see. At what point would Wichita State try to extend their defense, which is dangerous and it's risky because Liberty handles the basketball extremely well. Well, partner, if this score holds and Liberty advances to face Vermont, you were talking about a titanic clash of two real strong pedigrees in mid-major basketball. Liberty's been to six NCAA tournaments. You talked about Vermont and their recent run of success in the America East. Beautiful brand of basketball, though. Well, no question about it. Well, you've got two programs that have had elite coaches to stay right where they are at. And that's something that is a rarity with both coaches and players. And I think for administrations out there, we're at the point in this game where you have to choose the kind of program that you want to be. Uh, 
do you want to give your, your coaches time to win the basketball games that they need to? You know, you've got different coaches all over the country. There may be rocky starts, but you've got to be patient with those guys if you want them to be loyal to you and to stick around. And those are two programs where the coaches have done that and the programs have reaped the rewards. And come March, they are usually the hunters because they are the Cinderella's the Davids, if you will, to the Goliaths out there in the high major teams. But make no mistake about it, there is no secret about Liberty or about Vermont. Both of them preseason number one in their respective conferences. Oh! As we see Brody Peebles throw it down for another exclamation point. I'm going to be honest, players. Rich. I didn't know Brody had that in him now. <laughs> These guys continue to impress. The Liberty Flames have just been sensational. There are two games here at Myrtle Beach. We talked about Furman, and we thought that was going to be a clash of the Titans. I don't think anyone expected this with an undefeated Wichita State coming in here tonight. But they have really dominated this second half. Well, as the night has gone on, a couple of 3-0 teams have got victories around the country. There are now 13 4-0 teams in the nation. Liberty is about to make it a 4-0 start for them. But with Wichita State's loss, they will fall off that list. So only 13 teams are 4-0 right now in Division I basketball. Liberty is one of them, and Vermont is one of them. Yeah, over 350 teams in Division I basketball. That just shows you uh, how much pride that the teams that are left should have. Uh, I don't think there's any team that's going to end up going undefeated all season long. We talk about the late Bob Knight and his team that went undefeated. And of course this Wichita State program not sure. too long ago went through the entire regular season undefeated all the way into the NCAA tournament. Yep. Five on the clock. An air ball. Counting down to two minutes to go in this semifinal. Nice. Xavier Bell continues his tear here in Conway. 24 points for number one in black. And see, if you want to try to speed the flames up, this is what makes it a challenge because they've got so many guys that can handle the basketball. They're pretty strong with the basketball. They're quick. Richie McKay's club has won conference championship after conference championship. They've won either their conference regular season or the tournament title in each of the last five years. Last year they lost in the ASUN championship game in a heartbreaker to Kennesaw State that sent them to the NIT. And all they did there was take down a Villanova squad. John Becker's Catamounts have been in the NCAA tournament back-to-back -to -back years the last two. When you think about the Liberty Flames, they're in Conference USA their first year, able to win championships in the Big South and the A-Sun, actually independent from 1988 to 1991. They just continue to elevate their game. And Kyle Rode will go to the line. If he knocks down these free throws, he's got 30. Spend the time with his son. You called it. It has certainly been a family affair and it makes it an even better affair when you're able to go 2-0 and like they've done the first two days here at Myrtle Beach. Well, Richard McKay has been a head coach for a long time, but it's only been since July that he's been able to add the title Grandpa to the list. Luke and his wife Caitlin having a baby AJ, as they call him. Anthony being born in July. So now there's Grandpa Richie. As well. So Rhodes two free throws there 
give him 30 for the night. And now he's got another one. I'll tell you, when you face this Liberty team, you're going to have to be prepared for a physical basketball game. And when you look at the team, they just don't, you know, come across as physical, strong guys. But they are. And, and even more impressive than that is their motives. They don't get tired. They come at you the same way for 40 minutes. And the Shockers were able to find that out tonight. And uh, Vermont will be in for a tall task. But I'm sure that they'll be prepared for it on Sunday. 22 in white, Kyle Road will depart. One of just eight players to score 30 or more points in the Myrtle Beach Invitational. There's been some good players that have come through Conway, South Carolina to play in this tournament. Are you kidding me? So that's saying something. And now Richie McKay's emptied his bench with 40 seconds to go in this one. Liberty will improve to 4-0 on the season, one of just 13 teams to match that mark across Division I basketball at this juncture of the season. And they have a date on Sunday evening with the Vermont Catamounts for a Myrtle Beach Invitational Championship. This is a prime example, Rich, of what we've seen here in this tournament of teams that are connected, that have spent more time together, uh, obviously, Wichita State, Paul Mills, is his first year here, right? And so uh, players are still trying to figure out what he expects from them. Uh, he's still trying to figure out what his team and his players can do to give all the credit in the world to the Flames. They were the better team tonight from start to finish. Four starters back for Richie McKay. Three five-year seniors. Whew, it's like having three unicorns. <laughs> All smiles over there on those sidelines. Rightfully so. And a lot of those young men have been major contributors to a Flames program that has averaged 26 wins in the last five years. And certainly a learning experience for Paul Mills and this Wichita State program that is looking to rebound and rebound quickly. Yeah. They missed the NCAA tournament the last two years, brought Paul Mills in with one mission in mind, to compete for titles and to play in the big dance. They'll still be fine. They've got an opportunity to leave this tournament 2-1. They'll have an opportunity to do that on Sunday. But there's only one coach that's leaving this game tonight that's got a chance to compete for a championship against Vermont, and that's Coach Richie McKay.